Hello and welcome, this is Extra Fresh, and you're watching a video walkthrough of the BIOS for the Maximus 3 Gene motherboard. Right now you can see the settings that I run the board at, and this is also where we'll end up at the end of the video too, which will be the overclocking video. This first video will deal with all the other features, so if you're just interested in overclocking, go ahead and skip to video two. Right now, we're going to reset the boards to basic values, load set defaults, press F5 and OK, and then F10 and we're going to reboot the board. After rebooting I will talk you through all these basic menus and settings and uh, pick out a few that I particularly like and particularly use. We're going to do some delete button bashing, there we go, to get into BIOS. and we'll as said before, I'll skip the extreme tweaker menu for now. It goes straight to the tweaking menu because it is an enthusiastic board. Enthusiast board. It's an enthusiastic board as well. Uh, let's go to the main menu. This is system time, system date, and language, all pretty self explanatory. If you could read that. Um, and here we go to the SATA settings. Uh, there's a lot of settings that you can do in the SATA sub-menu for each port and uh, as you can see I'm running three identical drives I'm running them in RAID 0 which you can set the uh, SATA mode most of you will want to use the AHCI mode um, but I don't I want to use the RAID mode for my RAID 0 setup I know it's stupid to have your data on a RAID 0 but I like it anyway there we go the system information is just some basic information about uh, the system. It's, there's not much here, uh, but you can see the BIOS version, which is useful, 1305. And um, yeah, the, the amount of memory and the processor that you're running, the rest isn't really useful here. We go to the advanced menu. The CPU configuration will deal with in the overclocking uh, video. As you can see, there's a lot of values to go through here. Um, the chipset settings doesn't do much. You can disable the memory remap fe feature if you really want to. Um, but I wouldn't see the use. The onboard devices configuration is useful because it lets you disable the dreadful J microcontroller. There we go. We're just going to disable it. And um, this, this J microcontroller uh, badly drives a seventh. SATA port on the motherboard, um, but I'm using only four so I don't need it, and it also drives an E SATA port on the back of the board. So if you're using that one, don't disable this because it won't work anymore. Um, there's some other devices as well here, and um, there we go. There's a onboard devices disable button, so you can uh, disable all this for over extreme overclocking attempts. The USB configuration is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the light control I particularly like because here you can disable all the light that is going on on the motherboard. So there's uh, lights for uh, that tell you how crazy you are running your CPU or your memory, which is all fine and dandy, but once the wow factor has worn off, it's just not a lot of annoying light inside your room. So you can turn it all off right here. I think it's pretty useful. Um, the IRO configuration, as you can see, it doesn't do much. It sets a timer, but I don't even know what this timer does. The ROC Connect feature is a very cool feature, but it's not very relevant for this BIOS review if you want to know what it does. And I, if you own one of these boards, I suggest you do, because it's very cool. Uh, use the Google. We go to the power settings, where... Um, uh, you can see all the basic stuff that you can enable, disable, you can work with. And here you can put some power on by PCIe devices. So if you have a network card plugged in here, you can power it on by network. It's all pretty useful if you want to use those stuff. I don't, so well, just leave it disabled. The hardware monitor is worth talking about. There's a voltage uh, monitoring. You can see all the basic voltages of your system. You can change them over here, but you can 
uh, monitor them or you can disable them if you don't want to set off any alarms or false flags or if you're extreme overclocking and these are not reporting the right values. Um, we're going to the temperature monitoring which does basically the same thing, you can ignore those values but there's one interesting thing to talk about which is the OPT temperatures. Well, OPT stands for onboard probe temperature I think, I'm not quite sure but they are uh, for onboard uh, pinouts where you can plug into temperature probes, OPT1, OPT2 and what they do, uh, basically they measure a temperature but they are also connected to a fan header which uh, in the next menu I'll show you um, you can also have an overheat protection on these uh, pinouts so if this uh, measurement that is reaching 31 degrees right now should reach 70 degrees the system will turn off the system will just power off no buts, ifs or maybes so it will save your system once it gets too hot the fan speed here you can monitor it alright that's all fine but here you can control it which is a lot more fun the, I'm just going to use the OPT fan as a uh, example uh, you can disable it so the control is disabled, the fan isn't disabled, the fan will run at full dis full speed you can also set it to duty mode I don't know what why it's called this but it just say uh, run it as set value so 40 percent of the maximum of 12 volts is 5 volts which means that it will run at 5 volts and you can just set it to run at these intervals the more fun way to do it is the user mode which will actually link the fan speed to the temperature that the probe measures so right now I'm using water cooling so if the water in my water cooling system should reach 35 degrees it'll start scaling up the fan, sp fan speed and it'll reach full speed at 60 degrees which hopefully it will never do the boot settings uh, here you can set the boot devices I want to boot from SATA and here you can set which SATA device to boot from. Um, boot settings configuration, I always turn off the full screen logo and turn off the error message. Um, and here you can set supervisor and user passwords. So um, booting without these passwords is absolutely impossible and there's no software way to go around it because they're BIOS passwords. Useful. The ASUS OC profile is also useful, but again, the overclocking video will deal with all that. The go button profile, I haven't used it, so I can't report back to you how well it works, but here it is. Um, you can put in all kinds of values for voltages and uh, base clock frequency. And there's a button on the motherboard. If you press the button, this profile that you key in right here will be set and it will be used. The AI Net 2 application is a measurement for the uh, LAN cable. I haven't used it, so I can't say how well it works. And MemPerfect is a setting that allows you to run your system in a way that your memory will run perfectly. It might enhance some stability if you're having stability problems with your memory. But frankly, I'd like to do it the other way around, make my memory work for the system instead of the other way around. But uh, it's there and it could be useful, it could solve some compatibility issues. The a ASUS flash utility is a very cool one, let's enter it right now. And you can go to, this is no name, is my uh, uh, USB drive and you can browse around in this USB drive uh, and on the bottom you can see I have a few uh, overclocking, no not, not overclocking, I'm sorry, I have a few BIOS versions let's load it up and you can see right on top on the top uh, left you can see the current BIOS which is 1305 and on the right you can see the BIOS that I just loaded up from the USB drive which is also 1305 so no I don't want to do this but you could if you would, if you wanted to and if you have a new um, a new BIOS this is how you reset it and it works I've used it over and over again um, that's about it. That's the exit values, uh, the exit settings. Pretty self-explanatory. The rest, the overclocking, I'll be back with those in video number two.